Hello and welcome to a special virtual episode of The Bottle Episodes because today we are going to be talking about how to get your very own persona into VR chat just like I am right now. A lot of you guys have been asking me for help on this sort of thing so I thought why not just make a whole video about it and as a bonus Ferality is coming up. Yes, that is right. The second Ferality is coming up from the 6th of November to the 8th of November. So I wanted to give you guys plenty of time to get yourselves all fuzzy and ready in time for this virtual con. If you're new to VR Chat, it's basically a free online socializing game where pretty much everything is made by the community. Like the avatars, the worlds, everything. It's all made by people who have a passion for improving your virtual social life. It's, it's so cool. And despite being called VR Chat, you don't actually need a VR headset to play. It has a desktop mode, so you can just launch it on your PC like any other PC game and join in. But before we get into all the amazing options that you have to get your character into VR Chat, please note that VR Chat will not let you upload your own avatar until you've played the game for about 10 hours. VR Chat has this special user trust level system in place because when you give the open internet, voice chat, and the ability to create whatever they want, it's gonna get abused. You start off as the visitor level, and then if you play for about 10 hours while also behaving yourself, you'll eventually be upgraded to the new user level, which then allows you to upload your own avatar and even your own worlds. Oh, and if you like this world, it's called Japan Shrine. Definitely one of my all-time favorites. It's very pretty. Gives me back all those memories back to all my Japan trips. Uh, I just, I just want to travel again. I miss traveling so much. But yeah, don't be like me and excitedly make your avatar before you've even launched VR Chat for the first time, only to be met with the disappointment that you can't even use it yet. Okay, so now if you're at the point where you can upload your own avatar, you have four options. Option number one, commission somebody for a brand new avatar. Option number two, use a public avatar that is close enough. Option number three, recolor a pre-existing avatar. Or option number four, four, <laughs> no, four, make the entire thing from scratch yourself. Model, rig, textures, and everything. That fourth option is completely beyond me and I cannot help you there, sorry. And if you already know how to do that, you, you really don't need this video. <laughs> I bow to your skills. But if you're still after a fully 100% unique avatar, you can go ahead and commission someone. A custom VRChat avatar from scratch will cost you anywhere from a couple of hundred dollars to a couple of thousand dollars depending on how complicated your character is and how many extras and bells and whistles you get. Just like first hit makers, VRChat avatar makers will vary a lot. And it might feel expensive, especially for something that's not like physical, but think about it like this. In the really, really big professional industries like movies and video games, when you want to incorporate 3D elements, generally you'll have like one person who does the concept sketch, and then another person who will create the model itself, another will go and texture it, and then one person will go ahead and make all the bones, get it all rigged up, and then give it to another person to do the animations. Each one of those jobs is a very specialized skill set, and when you commission someone for a VR chat avatar, more often than not, it is one person doing all those jobs. One very skilled individual who has put a lot of time and work to get to the point where they are. So that's why VRChat avatars cost what they do, and I'd be willing to bet that they are still undercharging. But yeah, just like fursuits, make sure you do your research and get recommendations from people you trust. And check out the description below where I have given you some of the awesome VRChat avatar makers that I've already come across. Option number two, use a public avatar. When someone creates and uploads an avatar, they have the option to make it a public avatar, which means when anyone else comes across that avatar, they can take it and use it for themselves. Creators will often make whole worlds to showcase all the public avatars that they've made so people can just come along and pick the ones they like. Actually, let's go to one right now. Alright, here we are. The world of Avalis. Well, I should probably uh, look the part. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> I fit in. There are a lot of avatars here to choose from. You can come along and pick any one of them. Like, uh, oh, blue one. I want this one. And now I am this one. <laughs> yeah, you can... uh. Walk through here, pick anything you want. The only downside with public avatars is you can't customize them beyond what you can do in game. There is no way to take them out of the game and retexture them. But there are so many public avatars out there that finding one that's close enough to what you need shouldn't be too difficult. If not, why not make a new character? Now let me get back to my real self. 
and going hunting for really cool public avatars can be a lot of fun. Well, most of the time. There's avatars. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. Oh, 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 Jesus, what the, what the hell? <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. What the actual, well, I really had to stop myself swearing then. Good Lord. <laughs> I, w I, I was expecting random things, but I can't quite say this is what I had in mind. <laughs> Otherwise, if you really want to have those particular markings, you have option number three, recoloring a pre-existing avatar. That's the method that I like to use, and it is a lot of fun getting to pukaify lots of different species. Recoloring it yourself is going to require a little bit of technicality. You need to be able to edit image files like PNGs, and you need to do a little bit of fiddling in a game development program called Unity. Don't fret, I am going to give you a little crash course in doing so, so let's switch to my PC and I will show you how it is done. Hello, I'm down here now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is grab Unity. Yeah. Now, don't be scared by the big scary number. Uh, it's actually free if you're using it personally. You also need to create a Unity ID, so make sure you go ahead and do that first. Follow the prompts, pretty simple. Uh, but once you got that done, we go get Unity. Scary numbers, scary numbers, it's okay. We go individual, ah, oh, there we go, that's better. So we are personal, so you wanna get started. If you want to actually use it for like game dev later on, then yeah, feel free to do the first time users. But for now, we don't really need it, so you want to just go returning user. So make sure you agree to everything that is here. So as long as we're not making over 100k, we're pretty good. Right, download Unity Hub. Right. Save that one, get it installed, and then you should be met with something that looks like this. Those are my other attempts to get avatars working. So first, you need to go to installs, and so we need to check which version of the Unity that VRChat is currently compatible with. So if you go to this address here, it'll tell you what the current version of Unity that you need for VRChat is. So at the moment, we want Unity 2018.4.20 F1. So head back over. Now, you probably won't have anything here because I've already got lots of installs. This is probably blank for you. So you want to go add, select the version of Unity that we need. So it's the 2018.4.20 F1. It's not listed for me because I've already got it, but you'll have it there. You clicky, next, done, and then that will start to download. While we wait for that to download, we get to do the fun part, avatar shopping. I find that the best place to look for avatars is this website here, booth.pm, and then slash en to make it English. So if we search up VR chat avatar, we have avatars. Now you can get a bit more specific with your search, so Let's say we're a dragon. Let's go VR chat dragon. There we go. Oh, look, that's a cute one. Now, some of them will actually be free, but the majority will actually cost you some monies. I find that they tend to average between 20 and 50 bucks, depending on how detailed they are and how many extras they come with. So 50 bucks is a good budget to have. Now, before you download your avatar as well, you want to check whether it's an avatar 2.0 or an avatar 3.0 because that's going to become important in a moment. So, like, say we want this one. Let's have a look. Now, it doesn't say avatar 3.0 anywhere in this description, so I think it's pretty safe to assume it's a 2.0 because generally if it's 3.0, they'll make a big note of it because it, it, it is a selling point. So, if it's not there, I think it's a 2.0, this one. Another way to tell if it's 2.0 or 3.0 is check when it was released or last changed. So here we have the 19th of June. Avatar 3.0 was released on the 18th of September. So if it was made before that, yeah, it's a 2.0. <laughs> Another really good place to find avatars is the VRC Arena, where they're all actually split into species, which is really, really cool. So like, say you want to be a Trojan, click your vet, download from source, and there we go, see, it just takes us back to Booth anyway, Booth's a really good site, but yeah, if you want to find a particular species, this one is good as well. And before downloading your avatar, uh, check the description to see if it needs anything specific. Most of them will say dynamic bones, uh, you might also get some shaders and things as well, so Google those to find those. I highly recommend picking dynamic bones anyway, uh, just because a lot of VRChat avatars actually use this. Because it's what gives the avatars their sort of jiggle physics. Like, it's what gives my ear their wiggle. So if you want to have those cool wiggles, then I highly recommend grabbing Dynamic Bone. 
So pick your avatar, download it or pay for it or whatever your method is and you should get something called a Unity package file. That's what we need to put into Unity. So while your avatar downloads, we need to download the VRChat SDK, which is the special thing that allows Unity to talk to VRChat and is very important. This you get from the VRChat home. So make a VRChat account if you haven't already. Then you head over here to download and here we go. See how there's a two and there's a three and we're talking about Avatar 2.0 and Avatar 3.0. Here's where that becomes relevant. If your Avatar was a 2.0, get the second one. If it was a 3.0, get the third one. With everything downloaded, you want to create a new project. Now make sure you've got the correct Unity version selected in the drop down menu. So we want this one. And we will call this test make test face. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. Just do that and off we go. All right, once it opens up, you'll be met with this. Don't worry about that, get rid of that. And here we are. Now, I, I know it looks a bit intimidating, like th there's a lot going on here, but don't worry. It's just some simple dragging and dropping we need to do next. And for today's example, I'm going to be using Zab's Protogen avatar and Pokarifying it. Now the order of which you drag and drop these is very, very important. So first, you need to do the VR chat SDK, drag and drop. Give it a minute. Import. If it works, you should now have this little tab up here, but we'll get to that in a moment. Next one you want to drag and drop is anything else that the avatar needed. So your dynamic bones or any shaders, all that kind of jazz. Got dynamic bones. Drag that one there. Import. And finally, the avatar itself. Grab, drag, drop. This one might take the longest. <laughs> okay, there we go. That took a while. Now, a lot of stuff is going to pop up down here. Yeah, hopefully, whoever made the avatar that you chose, they've already made a little scene for you where it's all, like, good to go. So, if you do, it will look like one of these little boxes. So, clicky then. If you don't, you will have to drag and drop the model manually. Um, I'll go into that in a second. And look, there he is! That's the little protogen! Hey, cutie! Oh, and as for your controls for moving around the scene, so you got your mouse wheel for in and out. Uh, if you click the mouse wheel, you can pan around, and your right click is for, like, actually turning around. If you didn't get one of these pre-made scenes, you will have to drag and drop the model manually. It will take a bit more of a setup, so you'll be like, whoop. Yeah, see this one? <laughs> so this is why they've already made it for us, because yeah, this one isn't as simple as dragging and dropping the model. But if it doesn't already have a pre-made scene, then it probably does mean that it's like drag and droppable. Okay, but so far he is not Picarified, so we need to change that. You want to look for a textures folder, it might be called just text, it might say textures, anything along those lines. Here we are. So these are all the image files that this model is taking its appearance from. So, and what you can do is right click, go show in Explorer, and I'll show you where they all are. So we want to be editing the PNG files, but just the basic ones. So like, here's our good old Protogen body. Let's open that one up in Paint.net. There we go. So at the moment, it doesn't look a lot like anything. You can't really tell what's what, but there are two things you can do. One is to just draw on it and do a lot of trial and error to sort of work out what's what. So, so we could put a blue dot here, put like a green dot here, yellow dot there, pink dot there, save that. So if you save it, it will update on the model in real time. So we head back, give it a bit to load. Oh, hey look, there's our dots. So now we know that where the blue dot was, it's that, that arm. Where the green dot was, it was that arm. Our other two dots are the side of the body. So that's one way you can do it to help you find everything and then color it as you wish. Uh, but the other way to do so is with a program called Substance Painter. If you're lucky, you might actually already have a Substance Painter file with all the stuff you downloaded for your avatar. It's called a .spp. So this is Substance Painter. Now, it's, it's not free, it's 20 bucks a month, but they do offer a free 30-day trial and they don't ask for any like credit card information or anything as well. So if you're not going to be coloring avatars often, just do that. So you go try for free and then pick your platform of choice. So get that downloaded, follow the prompts, and then you'll have this little Substance Launcher. So once you get it all installed, you'll be able to directly open that SPP file. Yeah, give it a bit. This is a pretty hefty program, so be, be patient with it. Now, I am still fairly new to Substance Painter. Uh, I've been struggling with it a bit, but I can use it to do some pretty basic recolors. So that's the knowledge I shall pass on to you. 
Now, normally your model would be all here just in one piece, uh, but the protogen seems to be built with a lot of separate little parts, so in order to be able to see everything, they've laid it out like this for us, which is pretty cool. So the cool thing about Zeppelin's Painter is you can see the model in real time, but also the flat texture, So and you can paint on either of them as well. So if there are no existing paint layers, you have to make a new one, so click the little pink brush over here. And then you can literally just paint straight on it, so we can just be like, let's make it a bit smaller. Boop! Hey, look, now there's a dot over there! Or I could be like, boop! Oh look, it's happening on the other side too! <laughs> and the other cool thing is you have all your symmetry settings as well, so you've got that red line there for the symmetry, but if you don't want it, just click that. Now it's gone. Woo! We can turn it back on. Woo! <laughs> This will definitely be a lot easier for you if you already come from like a digital art kind of background. If you're new to digital art, this is going to be quite the learning curve, so I highly recommend looking up some other tutorials and things. Also, I found a really good introductory video for Substance Painter, which I've put in the card up there, so clicky that if you want a bit of a better and more thorough <laughs> introduction to Substance Painter. But yeah, I'm gonna get started on Picarifying this, so I will see you at the end of the time lapse. Let's go! There we go. So we got our body there. This model comes with lots of different tail options, so I just colored the one that I'm gonna use, which is the big old long one right there. Like the actual visor I found easier just to do in Photoshop just because of how like exact <laughs> the shapes are. I find that a lot easier to do in Photoshop. But you don't have to use Photoshop. Anything that can open up PNG files, you can edit textures. So yeah, once you are done, you go File, Export Textures. Make sure they are PNGs or whichever file type um, the original ones were, they should be PNGs. Alright, and then hit export. Right, so here are our textures. So you want mainly just the, the pure coloured ones for now. Like, don't worry about the normals or the mask maps. Like, that, that's the more stuff that is much too advanced for this little video. Now what you can do is take these files and rename them to their exact counterparts in your directory for your Unity model. Now show an explorer. So what we can do is grab our body one and rename it as Protogen Body, and that will that will change that. But what I like to do, I like to just open them up in like paint on it. So drag them over, open. There you go. So there's our ones that are currently on the model. Um, then go to our new ones, body. So copy, paste. So Control C for copy, Control V for paste, and then Control S save that one. It's going to save directly over that. And then the tail, paste, tail, control S, save. All right, then we go back to Unity. Give it a moment to load the new textures. Oh, look, now he's blue. Yeah, much better. Now, if your avatar comes with lots of different options like this one does, um, sometimes it's a matter of just turning them on and off. So for that, you want to go over here. You want to find the name of your model, the little drop down, and start opening into more stuff. So if it's grayed out, that means it's like hidden. So if you want to unhide it, like say I want the spike tail, you go over here, inspector, click that, and then it should normally appear, but that's not how this one works for some reason. <laughs> this one seems to be based on the meshes itself. So we go to the tail base, so we click that, click on the tail base, yep, and then it's gonna show us the rest of the meshes. So we can literally just drag and drop the mesh that we want us to change into. So we want tail along, drag, drop, boop, there we go, fixed. Similar to First Suit Makers, VR Chat Avatar Makers sort of have their own styles and preferences and things as well, so you may have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out how yours is going to work and what you need to do to customize it. But I haven't imported my mask one yet, so we go back to Photoshop. There's a little face I did, I just copy pasted my channel logo because I can't think of anything else for like a protogen emblem right now. Um, I do need to recolor each protogen face for this one like like normally when your VR chat avatar talks the mouth just moves like this one does now but because it's a protogen it has a separate image for each like mouth movement um, I'll, I'll do those later but yeah normally you'd want to recolor each one and import each textures paste back to unity give it a moment yeah there we go there he is I'm, I'm pretty happy with that you can go as simple or as intense as you want any image file in all this unity stuff you can edit like, this protogen comes with all these cool little custom screens that he likes to project, so 
I can go into any of these and change them to whatever I want. And here's our other um, mouth movements too that I need to go in and edit. <laughs> but yeah, once you are done, you need to load up the VRChat SDK. So show the control panel. Right, logged in, then head over to the builder. If you get any red alerts, uh, depending on what it is, it might give you an auto fix, it might not. If you log in and you're missing these tabs, you might have used the wrong SDK. And as far as I know, there's, you can't really swap it out once you're already this far in the project. Like, you'll still have all your textures and things, so you just want to make a new Unity project with the other SDK, import your textures and all that, start again. But if all is good, then you want to do a build and test. So clicky that. Again, this may take a little while. Once you get this little test avatar built, you can actually launch VRChat and give him a look. So let's do that. If you scroll down to other in your avatars, you should have this unmarked one. That is your test model. There we go. Ah, look at him. Looking good. There we go. See, that all works. See, the, see, the mouse is going to be funny because I didn't recolor the other ones, but oh, well, let's make the side things go weird too. Um, yeah, but besides that, yep, yeah, that's looking good. My tail's all wiggly, so are my ears because I have dynamic bones. Looking good. Yeah, so if we go to like emoji, see these are all the things that I was talking about before where you can like switch your screen. Do you? Do you? Oh, pog is. This pog. <laughs> so yeah, I can go in and individually edit any of these, which I will definitely be working on later. Ah, oh, blue screen. Ah, damn it. <laughs> now my product and broke. There's so much stuff you can do even just in game, even without going and editing it. Whoa. That's okay. <laughs> That's a bit weird. But yeah, everything seems to be in working order, so we'll head back over to Unity. Alright, so you want to build and publish for Windows. This, again, will take a little while, so go get a snack or something. Alright, there we go. So once it's done, you'll be met with this. So we can close that now. You've got your little screen here. <laughs> now, if you don't want this to be a picture of your uh, avatar pee posing, you can go back to the scene. Now we've got a little camera here. So you can actually grab that. Let's use these little arrows, sort of move it across. Move it in. Move it more across. Put it there. And you can actually change up here. So press this little these little arrows to get it to rotating instead of moving. So you go across. There we go. You go back to the game. Now it's updated. So give your avatar a name. So it would be like Proto Kari. Give it a description if you want. Of course, if it does have any of these tags, make sure to tag them because there are a lot of worlds in VR chat that do not allow avatars with this sort of context. Like, of course, there are worlds that do allow them, but like, please do uh, <laughs> declare them if they are in any of these categories. And then once again, click upload. This will take a little while. Once the upload is done, you can head back into VR chat avatars. Then under your creations, you should have your new avatar that you just uploaded. Here we go. Hit change. And we're done! Yeah! Now I'm proud of Jin. So I hope my explaining made sense. I did want to try and keep it short and sweet, but if you get stuck anywhere, just pop me a comment down below and I will try and help you the best I can. Just find those PNGs and as soon as you do, you can open them up in any program that allows you to edit PNGs, do your thing, save them, put them back in Unity, and you're good! Well, yeah, right, I'll hand you back over to the proper VR chat room. So there you go! Hopefully you now have the knowledge that you need to get your character into VR chat. It might seem like a lot, but persevere, trust me, you'll get there. If I can do it, like I hadn't even touched Unity before touching VR chat, and if I can do it, anyone can. YouTube tutorials are your friend. Google to the depths of the earth and you'll get it. But that is it for me. I hope you found today's video at least useful. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you either in the streams later or maybe in next week's video or maybe even at Ferality. Either way, I hope you're doing good and I will catch you next time. Bye. This month's anniversary shout outs go to Persephone and Tiny Sign Curve who have both been here for three whole years. Thank you guys so much. Then we've got Cassie Higavara and Paradox who have been here for two years. And for one year, we've got Azazel Folk, Lesky Roo, Zombunny Creations, and Cotton Candy Flufftail. Thank you guys so much for all the support.